Hello, hello everyone, it's Stray Fag here with another episode of Olympia Soiree. Alright, we're on probably chapter 6 of the prologue. Last chapter, we finally met all of the love interest. We got to meet Himuka, the boy with the skull, and we also got to meet Riku of the blue, although we didn't really get to talk too much with Riku. Maybe we'll talk to him more in this chapter to get a little bit more acquainted with him uh, before they set us down a particular path. Uh, Alright, so, anywho, we're starting the next chapter. Uh, what was it called? <laughs> like, what? We seek. We seek something. What one seeks. Uh, and yeah, Byakuya is once again in the Sundial Plaza looking for her husband. Uh, third time's a charm! Someday it'll work. I'm pretty sure that means you have to fail twice before something good happens. Or, I don't know, just... Beating a dead horse here. This doesn't seem like the place where you find your husband. Which means I should be able to talk to at least one man without any problems today. It seems like we meet, meet most of the husbands actually in Yomi, it's like of all places. Even those that, who aren't... Like, technically Yomi dwellers. Like, Riku. Riku's not a Yomi dweller. He's just on patrol down there. I carefully looked around the area. Given what happened in Yomi yesterday, I decided to have Daifuku stay back at the manor again. You don't, you don't want anything to happen to our hamster, you don't know. He wouldn't be useful in a fight either. <laughs> it's a bit lonely without him, but if something bad were to happen, he could end up trampled. Ah, uh, Lady Amaterasu, please give me... Hmm? Oh, hello. Why... Why is that person wearing cloth around his face? He's selling something, isn't he? Something about the sight of him made me hesitate. <laughs> it's like some little ominous... Uh... Very bright blue little tag is like glowing on him. I are you some sort of priest? No one in the plaza seems surprised by him. On the contrary, he seems quite approachable. As I keep my eye on the lone merchant. Good day. A young man was standing right next to me. Oh. Oh. Uh, what? Okay. <laughs> You're not on the box. Uh, but we have a portrait character. Uh, good day. Who was he? He is of the orange, I'm guessing. His color ribbon was orange. Is that so, some sort of uniform? His garments were of high quality. It was subtle gold adornments that spoke volumes about his wealth. Okay, he must be of a secondary tier. Uh, he must be in a high position. I also noticed he was carrying a small stack of folded papers under his arm. Could he be a teacher? He looks young. Uh... <laughs> um, forgive me for disturbing you, but are you saving this seat for someone else? Saving? Um, no. Then may I have a seat? I looked around at the other benches nearby. But there are a lot of benches open. Oh, is this your favorite spot? I'm sorry. Let me get out of your way. I wanted to speak with you, Lady Olympia. I heard you're looking for a husband. Oh, are you looking for a wife? Maybe, 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 maybe. Yeah. Your husband's search has paid off. You met a portraited char character finally in the Sundial Plaza. Gasp. I leapt off the bench in surprise. Is there a problem? Wait, could he be my future husband? Please don't worry. I don't mean you any harm. But if you're in a hurry, perhaps we can meet another day. Uh, well... I was hoping I could ask you about your search. Search? So he is... It was all happening so suddenly. My mind went blank and I felt sweat rolling down my back. It's like, oh no, it's happening for realsies this time. <laughs> Please don't be alarmed. I'm not. I'm sorry. Maybe next time. Oh, you got cold feet, girl. Girl. Bye. Ah, Lady Olympia.
Oh. Um, green fellow. Why are you not- are you- you're not a love interest. You're not on the box. <laughs> you think this- this guy would be like the green- the green love interest? Like a pinwheel next to your eyes. This is gonna poke you in the eye. Okay, he doesn't say anything. <laughs> I fell with a heavy crash onto the sand. Ah, ah. Uh, I took a fear fear cree from the plaza to the wharf. Uh, Fiacre, a mode of transportation commonly known as a carriage. Island residents pay a fare to the driver to be brought to a specified destination. I'm probably not pronouncing that right, but... <laughs> and from the wharf, I ran straight to the beach. Wow, you like, <laughs> you panicked that, that far, girl. <laughs> Erg, ugh, I'm so stupid. I've ruined my chances for the third time. I know, like, actual dude, like, approaches you in the Sundial Plaza, and then you panic. Although other times, dudes approached you, and you're just like, Oh, you seem nice. Let's ha let's have some dessert. I tried to catch my breath as I looked back in the direction of the plaza. Not that I could see it from the beach. I just assumed nothing would happen since all the men here keep their distance from me. What was I supposed to do back there, anyway? I gazed out at the serene ocean as I continued down my list of excuses as to why I ran away. Even if I were to return now, he must have already left the plaza feeling angry. Ah, I'm just... sorry. As the guilt settled in, I felt like jumping into the sea. Can't believe I ran away from someone who actually approached me. I must apologize to him if I'm lucky enough to see him again. My breathing finally slowed as I shifted my eyes back to Tenyo Island across the sea. Oh great, this guy. <laughs> Perhaps he was cursed by a Montarasso and sank to the bottom of the ocean. Don't- don't say that. When is Tsukiyomi gonna return? I doubt that the whirlpools around the island would sink him. I mean, he's, he's freaking Tsukiyomi. <laughs> Or did something happen on Tenyo Island? The whirlpools looked like gaping holes for more I sat. Smaller boats would likely be sucked in instantly. I'm sure he's fine. Yosuga did say that some sometimes Yo bleh, Yosuga did say that he sometimes doesn't come back for weeks. Oh hi. I get jigging, I've I've met you in many chapters. Oh, who do we have here? Are you alright? Ah. I hurriedly stood up and dusted the sand off my clothes. Good oh, good day, Lord Jiggin. I'm sorry to worry you. I was just resting after a long run. I see. Glad you're well. Th thank you. I trusted and respected Lord Jiggin. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that trust isn't misplaced. <laughs> trust no one. <laughs> At first he made me nervous, but I soon found out how gentle and kind he was. Lord Jiggin, are you here to search the beach as usual? Indeed, I am. A search entailed keeping watch over the beaches. To see if any outsiders had washed ashore. It's become my pastime to search for things too nowadays. I haven't found anything rare yet, but I've been able to gather a collection of seashells. I'm always amazed at how no two shells are ever alike. That reminds me of how we played with seashells where I came from. Bivalves such as clams have a perfectly matched shell, so we would line up the different sides to see if we could find their match. Is that supposed to be like comparing, like finding your soulmate, your other half? How cute! I didn't know people beyond the ocean played with shells like that. Two halves of one. The lore on this island is somewhat similar. Ah. I blush as I remembered about my search for a husband. I, I was surprised by the trial last time. I knew about the Kotawari, but I didn't expect to hear anything about my marriage. It really came out of nowhere. Indeed. 
If the mil- if the military is power, then I suppose the Kotowari is intelligence. Intelligence! They gather information and resolve problems related to color with a calm objectivity. They're enforcers as much they, as they are guardians. Because of them, we are able to live in peace. What do you mean? Lord Hiriko is the most venerable on the island, but he does not govern directly. Next in line would be me, Doma, and Shura. But there's a limit to what we can do with only the three of us. That's true. I mean, <laughs> not not to complain about your your ruling, but this is a lot of discrimination here. That doesn't seem like a nice place to live. Those who commit crimes are first captured by our military, then they are questioned. Next, the Kotawari reviews statements without bias so that a fair trial can be held. Managing such records is also part of their role in controlling the information on this island. Finally, a trial is held before us and a final verdict is rendered. I didn't know about the details. Thank you very much. That was very informative. Now it doesn't surprise me why the Iron Mask is like that. Lord Jiggin. It's been very su I've been very surprised these past few days by how little I knew about this island. I suppose studying and learning etiquette in the matter wasn't nearly enough. Staying inside reading books does have its value, but there's, there are some things you can only discover by going outside and searching on your own. It's exactly as you said, Lord Jigen. There's so many things out here that I can only really see with my own eyes. Indeed. I'll do my very best to learn more and thank you very much. That is a good habit. You have a bright future ahead of you, as long as you continue to seek knowledge. His wonderful words were the exact reason I trusted and respected him so much. Unlike a certain someone who only cursed at me. <laughs> Why, why can't you again be our, be our adopted dad? I, why couldn't have he taken us in? That's right. Let's say you learned something. You begin to feel unsatisfied with the status quo. Now you're looking to learn even more to change things. But any attempt to disrupt or change the laws of Tengu Island is seen as unacceptable. Um, Lord Jigen? Is it wrong to learn for the purpose of making changes? Is it evil? Both good and evil. Those who want change will see it as good, while those who do not will see it as evil. You're right. But it is in the nature of water to flow. When it stagnates, it begins to emit an unbearable odor. I wish to become the kind of person who does not fear change. I admired Lord again more than ever. He always said the, exactly what I needed to hear, as if he could read my mind. I wish that for myself, too. Lord again squinted gently and looked out towards Tenyo Island. I heard you met Tokisada and Yomi. There's no hiding anything from him. Did you know that he is an outsider just like myself? Okay, so... This is the second entry for outsider. There are five outsiders living in Tengu Island. There's Hiroko, Tsukiyomi, uh, Grandmaster Jigen, Grandmaster Doma, and Amahamas Kusashiro Tokisada. Holy crap, your name is so long compared to the other ones. I guess it makes sense. They did mention Jigen and Domo were outsiders while also being leaders of the color district. Well, well sure, as like the only one like born on the island. Uh, I guess that kind of makes sense because like I know it's like compared to a lot of the other characters, their hair colors don't really match up with like their color districts. <laughs> Otherwise, 
Like Akaza, he has red hair, red eyes. Even like Riku had like blue hair, blue eyes. Yosuga, purple hair, like purple eyes. Uh, Tokisada had like brown hair, but he wasn't considered like a Versi or anything. And like banished to Yomi, so I guess he has like a special place in the green? Huh? But he's so young! That was completely unexpected. <laughs> Age matters not. This ocean is connected to all places and brings forth many different things. Was Tokisada like considered a god then? Because they, they seem to equate being an outsider as like being next to godliness. You have like usually have like some sort of special power. Or you bring something to the table, like Lord Lord Jigen, like did something to help the Red, like this to like stop their curse, and that venerated him. Did Tokisada like? Did Tokisada have anything? Uh, we haven't really met Sukiyomi yet, but I mean he has like a pretty important sounding name. He was brought here by the waves, as we were. Okay, like literal outsiders, like they're, they like. We haven't really heard anything about like any other islands or like the mainland. Like we've only really heard about like like Tenyo and Tengu Island. Like, are there other places that we know about? Like in this world, his narrow eyes reflected the sunlight and gave a mysterious glimmer. That's right. Tokisada's eyes look just like Lord Jigen's and Doma's, are they? They don't really look- <laughs> I just noticed that the like hair colors don't really match like the color coding that they have in the districts. But I guess like Yeah, I don't I don't see any plus signs in his eyes. <laughs> Usually when they draw like older anime characters, they like they make their eyes a lot smaller versus like the young and like bubbly eyed ones. So, he really is an outsider. Maybe Tokisada's name was familiar to me because I heard it from Lord Jigen or Tsukuyomi. Did Tokisada come from a different place from where you lived, Lord Jigen? No, I believe we came from the same place. Oh, like, you know him? Did you know Tokisada before? I had heard the name, but... We lived rather far apart, so I never had a chance to meet him. Which is why I am happy to have met him here. I suppose fate brought us together. What an incredible coincidence. Both new and old can be found on this island. I wondered if this is the future or the past of the world where I lived before. At first I thought I arrived in heaven. But the people are all human. Of course we are. And from your our point of view, you're like a god lord again. But I am merely a human as well. I could never be a god. The mandala diagrams infinite worlds of which none can be proven false. We can assume they all exist in reality. Mandala. A represented representation of the universe containing patterns that depict gods and deities. Tsukiyomi uses show to create the die to paint the mandala of this world. What? <laughs> uh, I think I need a little, little more context here. What? <laughs> I'm sorry, but what is this mandala? I just think of like the Mandela effect, but <laughs> like that that's not what they're describing here. Lord Jigen picked up a thin piece of driftwood and began to outline an elegant pattern on the damp sand. The mandala is a symbolic image. They can be drawn for various purposes. It can be used to convey the structure of the world and its noble teachings, or perhaps as a prayer of enlightenment and peace. Is it something that can only be found in the land where you came from, Lord Jigen? Who knows? It may very well drift here tomorrow. I tried to look beyond Tenyo Island. 
So, the island you came from is far beyond the ocean. Indeed. Far, far away. It's unfair that we can't go there with all the whirlpools in our way. Because, <laughs> okay, so like, the whirlpools aren't just around Tenya, but they're also around Tengu. It makes, makes them, like, very isolated then. Having been raised on an island, you know well how dangerous the ocean can be. You are entirely alone without any land in sight. Nothing comes to your rescue, no matter how far you look into the horizon. That's, un that's terrifying. <laughs> During the long journey, many deplete their rations or fall ill. Yet many embark, dreaming about what lies beyond. Perhaps they dream of a new land, or perhaps of Potalaka. What is <laughs> Potalaka? A paradise said to exist far beyond the ocean. Are they trying to escape this, like, hell? <laughs> we're, we're called- I, I'm pretty sure, like, if you're not part of, like, the main color districts, many, many people on the island probably- probably have tried to flee. I'm not sure I understood everything Lord Jigen was saying. His words piqued my interest, but it would be impertinent of me to ask about every detail. Potalaka? Maybe Tsukiyomi knows what it is. Was it by chance that everyone arrived here, Lord Jigen? Or did everyone's... Or did everyone wish to come? Hmm. Oh? A large wave rolled ashore, then receded to reveal. Oh. Look, Lord Jigen! A bottle with the letter in it! Would it be alright if I opened it? No harm in that. That's like a plastic bottle. It has a twist cap. <laughs> uh, Tokyo. Tokyo, a land once known as Edo, where Grandmaster Jigen lived with the, in the other world. Uh, it is current- its current culture and technology are far more advanced than Tengu Islands, and there's no formal class system in place. It's like- <laughs> Alright, this is like a strange- strange world then, like, our modern world is like somehow connected to this land, but like, looks like people can't travel like freely back and forth. This is also like dated 2021, so it's like very much modern Tokyo. <laughs> Alright, well, hello! This letter is from Tokyo, Japan. I hope someone finds it. If so, please reply. Just chuck the bottle back. Maybe it'll make it across the whirlpools. Kept, I kept repeating the word over and over in my mind, hardly be believing what I was seeing. Lord Jigen! Look! It says Tokyo! Could it be the name of the island beyond the ocean? Is this... Is this real? I believe so. That bottle arrived here from a place in Tokyo in Japan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, that one place where they make the video games. An island in the other world where Grandmaster Doma and Grandmaster Jigen are said to have lived. Okay. They're like... They're not really gods, they're just... They're just modern day people. That like somehow landed up here. They got they got isekai. I slowly trace my fingers over the word. This is such a cute letter. Can't believe such a wonderful thing was washed ashore. I know this may be rude of me, but I always felt doubtful about this Tokyo place. I didn't believe there was such an island, even after I was taught about it. But it really does exist. It's really true. And people really live there. Indeed. The world is a vast place. I strained again to look beyond my island. The ocean fills the horizon beyond Tenyo Island. The great whirlpools at its edge prevent us from venturing beyond them. Even then, that bottle was tossed upon those very waves and arrived to you without as much as a crack. <laughs> so, I mean, is it, is there's a modern, like, Japan out there, like, could we, like, fly here? <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the time of air travel. Or is it, like, 
Or is this place like not really like a real place that you can just that you can just fly to? There, even then that bottle was tossed upon those very waves and arrived to you without as much as a crack. Is it alright if I keep this sludge again? Of course. You found a fine item today. Thank you. I'll take good care of it. Like the seashell I found before, I gently placed the bottle inside my bag. The waves bring forth what one seeks. The waves bring forth what one seeks. Everything you've taught me today has been wonderful, Lord Jigen. Whatever drifts ashore belongs to whomever finds them. That is because the waves bring each person the very thing they must receive. Seems like very poetic. <laughs> like somewhat religious. And it shall bring them luck. That's what Lord Hiriko said, didn't he? They say that he too drifted here from another world. I suppose it means we must never dismiss that which is that which is brought to us. Um I quickly looked around before whispering. Lord again? I'd heard you've seen Lord Hiriko before. Through the blinds, yes. But that was a long time ago, right? <laughs> Doubtful that Lord Hiroko exists. N not at all. I know he's the most important person to exist on Tengu Island. But... I wouldn't mind seeing what he looks like. Why not ask Doma for details? <laughs> Why? Well, I don't want to ask Doma for anything. <laughs> That's not gonna happen. Are things as usual? He hates me. I can only pray that the letter in this bottle will really bring me good fortune. I shall pray for that as well. Even even Jigen knows that like something something's up with Doma. Like, dude, why why didn't you like adopt me, please? Alright, okay, seaside cottage. It's been a while since I've been here. I guess I've been busy. This is a cute little place. It's like a Bed and a kitchenette. Cozy. I took off my cap and jacket and walked to the window. I took a breath. Oh, this is all their collection. This <laughs> she's like Ariel from the Little Mermaid, just like collecting all sorts of stuff. And here's that dingle hopper. There's no fork there. Yeah, lots of seashells, some like fishing tackle. Origami. That is origami. I'm guessing this is stuff that she found on the beach. I don't know how the origami survived. Maybe maybe it was in a bottle. <laughs> little ducky. Little fat little ducky. Okay, it's cute. Little washi tape. Hmm, I've collected quite a bit. Inside the antique drawer were my treasures. It contained colorful seashells, glass shards, and other interesting items I found along the shore. This is your home now! Alright, letter in a bottle. The, pla the plastic bottle. <laughs> I set the small bottle down in an empty space. Tokyo. I wonder what it's like. Ah, to think it truly exists. Tsukiyomi told me before to go outside once in a while for a breath of fresh air. At first, my governess accompanied me everywhere I went. Soon I was able to go to the beach by myself. Even then, I tried to avoid people. And he had a carriage take me to and from the beach. Come to think of it, I've been coming to the beach alone more often recently. Alone? That didn't mean I was lonely. I just refused to walk around the island by myself before. I've been having fun going out alone. Maybe you wish for something more. What a nice breeze! This cottage on the cape was a ways from the shore, but I could see Tenyo Island clearly from here. This is my hideout. 
or I went to be by myself. Okay, <laughs> this is a nice hideout. <laughs> Usually when you think of hideout, you think of like tree fort or something. Got a whole ass cottage. A cottage owned by Grandmaster Doma that is currently being used by Olympia as a hideout. Tenyo Island can be seen from the window. Well, hopefully like Doma isn't like using it. <laughs> He'd be kind of a downer if he just like popped up here. I enjoy the gentle breeze while drinking tea, reading books, and taking naps. The wind must have carried the air here from Tenyo Island. Feeling the breeze tickle my skin brought me back to the island I called home. Mother, please bring me... Bring me the island's colors, scents, and happy memories. I lay down on my bed, closing my eyes to reminisce about the island scenery and days gone by. Mm. Are we gonna reminisce about Mother again? Aqua. The flowers are in full bloom today. Let's borrow two and wear them together. Oh, child Biakia. <laughs> Yay, me and Mama together! That's right. Let me tell you something special. We girls on Tenyo Island have a wonderful secret. Wonderful secret? When you and your soulmate find and find each other and fall in love, you will. Oh, fade, fade out memory. No, mother. Mother? I jolted up in bed, nearly falling off of it. Then tur I turned to look out the window. But that's right. I can't believe I forgot what my mother told me before. Why am I only remembering it now? When you and your soulmate find each other and fall in love, you will... You will what? When I find my soulmate and fall in love, I will... I mumbled to myself, chugging at the ends of my white hair. Wait, does that mean I... The more I thought about it, the more embarrassed I got. Why you think about the birds and the bees here? <laughs> I threw out my jacket and cap and hurried outside. Getting a little embarrassed. Before I can fall in love, I need to find my soulmate first. Back to, back to the Sundial Plaza? Is that where we're going? Oh, we're going to Yomi. Hmm? Is that...? It's this guy. This bastard. So, you have returned here. Riku. I have friends in Yomi. Of all the places to make friends. But no one at the surface is willing to be my friend. All they do is stare at me from afar. That is because you have an important role to fulfill. And I am fulfilling that role. Please return to Lower Doma. I don't. <laughs> no, no, no Doma, please. <laughs> no. I gave up on talking to him and tried to walk past. Just a moment. Do you have a permit? I came down here before with that one. Are you being a stickler for the rules? Huh? I cannot let you through without a permit. Huh? But I was able to go in yesterday. The god was likely obeying Olympia's orders. Bending the rules of Kunado cannot be allowed. Well, he is right. Kaza also said I needed a permit. <laughs> I still haven't gotten one. Well then, how do I go about acquiring this permit? Please give up Olympia. You really mustn't be wandering around, Yomi. I'll ask you once more. How do I obtain a permit? You do not require a permit. Is that for you to decide? If I don't require it, <laughs> that, that means I can just walk past. <laughs> we'll see ya. <laughs> Please just return to the manor. As a god of Kunado, I cannot just let anyone without a permit to enter. Then tell me I didn't get one. <laughs> So tell me where I can get this permit! You don't need one. Listen carefully. Yomi is... Hey! I got your permit right here! Hey, thanks, Karoba! 
Being a bro here. What? I've been looking all over for you. Your permit was finally issued. That's great. Thank you. One you don't need. Just pretend you can't hear him. <laughs> ah, I'm gonna rub his nose in it. <laughs> See ya. I got things to do. Maybe we can go on a date later. Well, have fun doing your things. That's right. Akaza expedited your permit application, so remember to thank him when you see him. Huh? I wasn't sure what to say, even though Akaza wasn't here. The Iron Mask... for me? <laughs> Byakuya, authorized by the Kotowari. Permit transit. Transit restricted to permit holders. I looked at the new permit in my hand. They had my name on it, so it couldn't be some kind of prank, could it? The Kotawari is being far too lenient. I cannot believe Olympia of the White would be willing to visit such a hellhole. Here's my permit! <laughs> neener, neener, neener. Please proceed. Like that, Riku. Back to the inn. I'm glad I got to the gate, but the truth is, I'm just running away again. I can't find my place on the surface, so I'm using Tsukiyomi as an excuse to come here. Ugh. Now that I think about it, I really treated that orange person badly. Still agonizing over that. <laughs> Didn't even introduce ourselves. Just ran away. And don't worry, he's a portrait character. He's gonna pop up again. As I walk through the main hall... Oh, it's Tokisada. Oh, thank god. There you are, sis. Look! It's your mouse's younger brother, Paris. Oh, right. There was another- there was another mouse mentioned. Like, only in the descriptions, though. We didn't get- we got to see Juliet, but we didn't get to see Paris. A mouse popped up from the little cage in Tokisada's hands. Oh, hi. You are- Okay. <laughs> I like I like their little tails. They kind of look like the little like brush tails in Okami, like all the all the celestial brush gods. Uh How wonderful to meet you, Ime. I thank you for taking care of my foolish brother. He's so skinny. Or maybe Daifuku is just fat. Nice to meet you, Paris. I'm so sorry. I didn't bring Daifuku with me today. <laughs> Daifuku? Ah! I, I named him Daifuku. You know, because he's round and white. Cute, right? <laughs> Yusuga had the same reaction. <laughs> no, no, I shouldn't be laughing. I think it's perfect for a soft, fluffy mouse. I love Daifuku sweets, too. Well, he always... He always was a bit plump compared to Juliet. Daifuku, huh? Hmm. How pathetic. I can only imagine how much fatter he's become. Sis, I used to think you were too pretty to be down to earth, but I'm glad you're normal. I look normal to you? Huh? I moved towards Tokisada quickly and, immedi and he immediately took a step back. Oh god. <laughs> getting, getting approached a little bit too quickly here. Well, normal as in... Let me see. You're a lot friendlier than I thought. Really? Do you really think so? Maybe it's because I saw you stuffing yourself with sweet buns last time. Still, I'm happy to hear you say that I'm normal. It's the first time anyone's called me that. <laughs> Just being called normal, she's like, oh, Tokisada, huh? Oh, I love you. Well, it's pretty painful being abnormal, isn't it? Tokisada, did you say something? I just said I want to eat some Daifuku now. I'll ask you so good to make some later. By the way, did you have a problem with the military yesterday? Are you alright? 
Camellia was really worried. Oh, I didn't get hurt, but... I told him what happened, and he tilted his head and thought. Uh, well... Yomi's no safe haven, that's for sure. I rarely bring Paris down here with me. He prefers staying inside, too. Usually just sleep. He's usually just sleeping inside his cage. That's interesting. Daifuku's usually running all around the room back at the manor, <laughs> and yet he's so fat. I wonder if that curiosity is the reason why he ended up on the surface. It's possible. I can see that being the case. I'm just happy he's safe. I was helping everyone with the search back then, too. I know it sounds odd for me to say this, but thank you. And I'm sorry for the trouble. I hope we can have Paris and Daifuku see each other again someday. But... <laughs> Paris. I don't care, really. <laughs> it's like, I, no, we don't need to meet. Imagine they just start fighting. They have like a little dominance match. Like when my cats see each other. I'll bring him the next time I come. We'll be waiting. Doki saw a smile and his eyes glimmered mysteriously. An outsider. Um, Tokisada? I ran into Lord Jigen at the beach earlier. The Lord Tokisada? Paris's cage rattled for a second. Uh, Tokisado is also shaking in shock. Uh, do you know him? And is he not... Is it a not a good association? <laughs> what? I was completely blindsided by his reaction. Tokisada gripped the cage with his hands and forced out a smile. You saw Lord Jigen. Uh, d did he say anything about me? Only that you're an outsider. You mean about... You're being an outsider? Tokisada nodded briefly. Uh, I'm sorry. Is that something I shouldn't have known? Not that you had a choice, since Lord Jigen told you, right? I nodded. Well, what's done is done. I knew I couldn't hide it forever. Tokisada set the cage down on the table, then brought his face close to mine. Oh, hello. Okay, I can see his eyes, like, clear clearly now, the plus side, side the plus-shaped eyes. It was like a character, like, I remember, oh, uh, was it? God, I forgot what the anime was called. It was like Grunlogan? That was like a really weird anime where, like, the, the tone of the anime, like, shifted, like, very rapidly. But I remember, like, one of the girl love interests, like, later on had those weird, like, plus-shaped eyes. Yes, I'm the fifth outsider on Tengu Island. I could see right into Tokisada's eyes. They had a beautiful cross-like mark on them that reflected the light. Look at my eyes. Just like Lord Jigen's, right? Apparently this proves I'm an outsider. I couldn't really tell with Lord Jigen, like, <laughs> I can't even see his eyes. Uh, third entry for Outsider. While they appear virtually indistinguishable from the other residents of the island, their eyes possess features unique only to them. They, like, mostly different though, because, like, their hair color doesn't really match their eyes. Like, Doma has, like, distinctly black hair, but he's not considered of the black color class. And, like, Jigen has that, like, strawberry blonde hair. I guess you can argue that's kind of a reddish color, but... Uh, what do you think? Pretty creepy, right? Uh, you look like a cute little anime, anime girl. <laughs> Not at all! Huh? Tsukiyomi is like family to me, and I'm friends with Lord Jigen, and, and Doma is... Well, Doma, but in any case, I never thought about them. <laughs> you don't care that Doma is an outsider. Doma is just a, just a bastard, like, regardless of if he's an outsider or a local. <laughs> you just mean. Uh, come to think of it, you're surrounded by outsiders. Also, did I miss something? For some reason, uh, 
Okay, yeah. I must have mashed. Uh. <laughs> I saw like a dialogue box just like pop up really quickly. I've only just noticed it too. Didn't bother me one bit. I'm actually happy you're an outsider. I love talking to Tsukiyomi and Lorge again because they tell me about things I never knew before. So I'd like to hear more from you, Tokisada. Huh? No? Well, I can't go around l giving out important information. R really? Let's say I'll share more as we become better friends. All the secrets you want to know, sis. Let's do that then. Huh? No, I'm blushing. You're cute. Little cutie patootie. I mean, we are friends already, right? Oh, but... How can we become better friends? <laughs> oh, even better friends. Friends with benefits? What? Sis, are you sure you're older than me? Well, I guess we are only a year apart. I mean, maturity-wise... You're probably like... You're probably ahead of the game. Because <laughs> Olympia's been stuck in her room this like whole time. Socially. Socially, she's... She has not grown much yet. Huh? Did I say something strange again? What do you mean again? I told them about the time I was with Kuroba and his stethoscope and Tokisada clapped his hands. Oh, the stethoscope. That surprised me too. I couldn't believe it could tell you if you were healthy or not just by pressing it against you. Wait, what? You're, you're an outsider, right? Like, you think you would know about, like, stethoscopes and stuff? Amazing, isn't it? Tenyo Island didn't have any, but I was happy to see one for the first time, but they just laughed. <laughs> what really surprised me was the carriages. We didn't have them where I came from. Do you have cars? <laughs> really? So what did you use when you needed to travel long distances? We either rode horses or used a palanquin. Uh, okay, you are from a different... You are not from modern Japan. <laughs> I'm guessing. A palanquin? I looked at the cage Paris was in. Oh, not this. It's large enough to fit a person, and there were carriers to lift it up. Ah, I think I've read about them. There weren't any pictures, so I always wondered what they looked like. That's probably it, but... I see. Just because it's in a book doesn't mean there'd be one here. That's why I keep going to the beach. I'm always hoping to find new things. This is a really interesting island. It's kind of weird, <laughs> I don't know. Really? Come to think of it, I was surprised at everything myself when I first came here. My teacher taught me academics, my governess taught me etiquette, and I read whatever books I could. I thought I was well educated, but... There's still so many things I don't know. I want to keep learning as much as I can. That, that's really good to hear. I should do the same. I've only been here a few years after all. Heh. I guess we're like school friends then. Let me know if you know if you learn anything interesting. Well, the quest for knowledge and truth was a noble mission given to humans, so I will try uh, to, to help. Oh, Tokisada. Now that we're f real friends, why don't you speak casually with me? Uh, are you sure? But aren't you cautious of men being too friendly with you? Not at all. R really? I mean, sure. If you say so, sis. Oh, saw it like more nervous compared to before. I, I was somewhat curious or cautious of him at first, but he seemed a lot more polite than I thought. Hi, Yosoga. <laughs> hmm. And here I thought you were shy and innocent. You're a lot braver than I thought. Ugh. You're a step ahead of Akaza and Kuroba. Not bad. Stop it. Don't be stupid. It's not like that at all. <laughs> Is he trying to get with trying to get with Byakia? I mean they are the same age, so they probably relate to more things. 
He's right, Yusoga. Stop teasing him. We're just friends who want to teach each other what we know. Oh, rip, friend-zoned. Friend what she said. How about some fresh sesame balls? Heh, <laughs> I learned what sesame balls are today. They were delicious with all the sesame seeds sprinkled on top. I'm sure Taifuku is gonna love these. And we brought some leftovers. I happily looked down at my bag stuffed to the brim when I suddenly realized I completely forgot to look for my husband again. The sun is about to set. They're literally like right in front of you, girl. I was like, oh no, I didn't find a man. Like you literally talked to Tokisada a bunch. You talked to Yosoga. You, you talked to the Lord again. A nice, nice conversation with him. I mean, I don't know if he's single or not. He's a little, a little bit older, but. Well, there goes the third time's a charm. I stared helplessly into Yomi's sky. Maybe I should look for that person back at the plaza. Hmm? You there! Are you okay? Ugh. You can't move? Just a second, I'll get... ...some food, please. Who's this? this? <laughs> oh, you're hungry! What perfect timing! Here's some sesame balls from Ch Chicken Joe. Go ahead and take them. The young man reached out weakly and took a bite. Good, so good! What? What is this? Eat slowly, I still have more with me. He ate one, then two, then three. After gulping them down, he quickly sprang up as if he had just come back to his senses. Oh, hello. You have a portrait. Um. Uh, you look like you're actually yellow. Although he has a little, he has a little gray highlights. Uh. Okay. We're making a lot of portraited characters today. Uh, uh. I'm sorry. You saved me. Not a problem at all. Were you only hungry? Are you feeling ill or anything? No, I'm perfectly healthy, unfortunately. Oh wait, did you want, did you not want to be healthy? Unfortunately. Ah, he has a mark on his cheek too. Uh, I can't see my family ever again. They gave me this horrible mark. Um, you're Olympia, aren't you? I saw you dance a number of times on the surface. Why, yes, I am certainly her. I immediately tried to go back to acting like a doll, but I couldn't do it properly. I've been my real self for a while now. Hmm? His face... He looks familiar. Did, did you see him before? Like, while you were dancing? I don't know him, do I? Uh, excuse me for my rudeness, but you aren't anything like the rumors say. Hmm, maybe she did know him. Like, he does kind of have yellow features. Uh, I wonder if he got, like, banished for something. <laughs> Is that so? I never imagined you would offer me food. Especially since you're with Lord Doma. I thought you'd be cold-hearted. The sesame balls I gave you might be poisoned. <laughs> you even joke. And you saved a Yomi resident like me. I'm not cold-hearted enough to ignore someone in need, whether they're on the surface or in Yomi. Is there a problem? She just might. Excuse me? Um, I have a favor to ask. Can you take a letter to my younger brother on the surface? Huh? It was so sudden that I was a lot at a loss for words. I, um, have something to do today, but I'll be back tomorrow morning. I'll write the letter as soon as possible. So would you be able to meet me here around 10 o'clock? 
I was exiled to Yomi recently. But there's something I need to tell my younger brother. Please. You're my only hope. Please help me. Please. Please, I beg you. Aw. We need to get to learn his name. What? Uh, he's not on the box. I'm guessing he's not a love interest, but... Unless he's like a seeker out character. Thank goodness, it's still open. It's a long shot, but I guess I have no other choice. Good evening! Huh? What's the matter? Finally want to go on a date with me? Maybe later. This is unusual. To see you of all people here at this hour. I have a favor to ask you, Akaza. Is this about taking me as your husband? <laughs> no. No, this is not. I'm trying my best to make sure that never happens. Not that I've had any result of my own. Someone in Yomi asked me to deliver a letter to the surface. I'm assuming this isn't allowed? Of course. Please! You just acknowledge yourself that it isn't allowed. <laughs> I want to bend the rules here. He said he was recently sent to Yomi and that he really wants to send a letter to his younger brother. Which means he is likely a criminal. Did he have a mark on his cheek? He did. It settled. He barely escaped execution. What? Being sent to Yomi means you lose all rights you had on the surface, including your affiliation with your color. Oh man, that, he must have fallen far. Like, if he was of the yellow, he was like a primary color class. Instead, you're branded with a mark that identifies you as a criminal. So that's what that mark was. What did he do? How did you find yourself in contact with him? He had collapsed from hunger, so I gave him some sesame balls. <laughs> Typical Olympia. Now you're feeding them. I glared at Karoba and then took a step forward. Please, sir. Director of the Kotowari. You're the only person I could talk to about this. Lord Jigen told me that the Kotowari can look at situations without bias. He did have a mark on his face, so he probably committed a crime. But he won't be able to see his younger brother again. I feel sorry for him. It's just one letter. But if someone so rebellious towards us, he seemed very comfortable asking for help. You're right, but I can't turn a blind eye to someone asking for help. If he committed a crime, he should be punished. But is he not allowed to feel anything for his family as well? well what did he do? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, hmm. I'll need to inspect it first. Inspect? You mean you're gonna read the letter? Let's make sure there's no like compromising information. Under normal circumstances, those in Yomi are prohibited from being in contact with anyone on the surface. That's what he says. I've been a delivery boy a few times myself. Hear that? Then I can just sneak the letter past the guard. You are in a unique position. Additionally, this person has been found guilty of a crime. Which means the possibility exists that he is looking to use you. But, but... He was lying on the ground, hungry. Where is this letter going? Who's this guy, anyway? Come to think of it, he didn't give me any details. The two of them looked at each other. The situation wasn't looking good. He got no info, only that he has a younger brother. I mean, he's of the yellow. We'll ask around if there's any, like, people of the yellow that got banished recently. He left right away and mentioned that he had something he needed to do. I didn't think he was purposely trying to hide his name or trick me or anything. 
As I spoke, I was making myself feel uneasy about the situation. Please explain to him that I will be reading his letter first. This is to ensure that the content is safe to send. If he does not agree to those terms, then leave the area quickly without it. Are we gonna have like an escort? <laughs> Things might get ugly if we don't do what he says. <gasps> I'll let him know. The criminal didn't give me his name. I'm not surprised that Akaza is being so careful. Mind you, not every criminal serving out a sentence is a bad guy. We just want to play it safe. Do you know where the prisoner dormitory is? It's the Grey Building, far down Yamotsu Hirasaka. Access to that place is usually restricted, so you need to explain yourself once you're there. Thank you. I'll look for it. I have to admit, I thought he'd say no. I guess the Iron Mask is some is is sometimes. Ah, I completely forgot. What now? Um, I took the permit out for my bag. The thank you for getting the Kunado permit issued for me. For you, any time. Am I dreaming? The Iron Mask smiled, gasped. I must be dreaming. I looked again and saw his face back to his usual expression. <laughs> it was like a, a, a quick crack in the facade. Is this permit only issued to people on the surface? So the people in Yomi can't go through? Some Yomi residents are issued permits for the purposes of work, but only a select few. In general, you can assume the odds of someone from Yomi going to the surface are slim to none. I see. Wait, but a lot of people pass through Kanado, right? Why would the people on the surface go down to Yomi? There are different types of permits. One of them's for work. Like for me and Akaza. Yours is for work too. Next are merchant passes used for deliveries. See, Yomi needs a lot of external supplies to keep it running. And the newspapers are a valuable source of information. So newspaper vendors are given the right to sell anywhere, to all color classes. A newspaper. A printed paper made for the purpose of delivering news to the masses. This includes conveying announcements from the public institutions and reporting on matters of interest to the general public. I'm gonna drink some water. <laughs> Newspapers? I've heard about them before. They were introduced to the island some time ago. The Kotowari and the military print important announcements in the newspaper, and forming people individually would be highly inefficient. I had no idea. Printing everything on paper does seem much easier to understand. But they don't sell all too well. The residents only buy them because they have to. Which means most of them don't. But there's one publication that's really popular with folks. Some of the more interesting editions sell out in just hours after release. Really? What kind of publication is it? Descriptions of men and women who have reached <laughs> who have reached mating age. <laughs> Can we not call it that? A uh, dating age, maybe? It's also announces who got married in which color class, stuff like that. It's like a tabloid, like, dating magazine. Maybe people like searching for partners. Yes. It's entertainment. Mating? Marriage? As silly as it sounds, something like that could help me find a husband. Just broadcast it out there. Olympia looking for husband. <laughs> See how many take- you get, probably get a lot of takers. Um, I might be interested in reading something like that. Where can I buy one? Have you ever seen anyone in the street with a cloth mask? Ah, I saw someone like that in the plaza today. That's probably him. Next time you see him, give him a shout. I nodded seriously in response. Lastly, we've got recreational permits to go to places like Yosoga's. Recreational permits? So the people on the surface can get permits just to go to the bathhouse? 
As long as the proper paperwork is submitted, yes. A lot of people up here may hate Yomi, but they sure do love their baths. I see. I <laughs> gotta go to the, the, the pleasure district, the, the fun district. Also, I hope you guys can't hear the dog barking in the background of the very yippy dog next door. I can see why everyone would want to go to a beautiful bathhouse like Yasoga's, but... People from above choose to visit for leisure. While well, people in Yomi can't even get a simple letter delivered. I know, it's not fair. No matter how I look at it, it's so unfair. Um... I heard a young boy's voice from behind me, just as I was about to call for a fiacre. Ah! Oh, this guy. You're you're called Vendor, but you have you have a you have a portrait. Um. Is that you, wait, is this is a guy with a cloth mask. It doesn't really look like cloth, but because he kind of looks like one of the merchants from Monster Hunter, the Wolverian merchants that just like have face coverings on them. I'm terribly sorry, but do you have some time to speak at the moment? He's the person I saw at the plaza. Why, yes, I was actually looking for you. Me? But why? You sell newspapers, right? I was hoping to buy one. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have any right now. The newspaper isn't printed every day. Ah, but I heard we'll be printing some tomorrow. They told me that this one will sell really well, so please look forward to it. I see. Well, then I'll be looking for you again tomorrow. His face covering made it hard for me to see his expression. But his polite mannerisms and gentle voice put me at ease. Um, speaking of which... When I'm not selling newspapers, I'm selling these. He lifted the cloth of his wicker basket. I looked inside to see what looked like sweets in the shape of flowers. They were so cute with color variations and light, light, light green, pink, and yellow. Let me get some cookies. They're so cute. What are these? They're called. Oh, that's a name. Uh. <laughs> okay, they're like fortune cookies. They kind, they kind of look like sugar, like little sugar candies or sugar cookies. Uh, they're called. Sujiura, you crack them open to find a strip of paper inside with your fortune. Sujiura, cookie sold by Hairi for 100 yen each. Is, this, is that this guy, Hairi? <laughs> Breaking open the cookie reveals a slip of paper with fortune inside. They, just, they seem like a, a more stylized fortune cookie. Sujiura? I've never seen these before. Uh oh. That's. <laughs> Okay. I was like, my microphone software is updating. Uh-oh. <laughs> I better go check. Check after the recording, make sure nothing's, like, changed. Sujiura, i never seen these before. The sun's about to set, and I still have so many left to sell. My mother will scold me if I don't sell them all. <laughs> she might not even let me in the house. I don't know if I'll be able to eat. What? My lady, would you please buy one? They're only a hundred yen each. The basket had at least twenty inside. Can't believe you'll be scolded for not selling them all. I'll take ten. Huh? Really? I'd love to buy them all, but I doubt I'd be able to finish them. Are you gonna give them all to Daifuku? No, ten is more than enough. I'm sure my mother won't scold me now. Here you go! Thank you very much! I've never- I'll never, never forget your kindness! I should be thanking you! You look delicious! I should find, like, a different voice for- for Hyrie. <laughs> You're gonna pop up more often. My lady! Behind you! The carriage is here! Oh wait! I'm coming! I hurriedly collected the wrapped sweets and ran to the fiacre. Thank you very much. I hope we meet again. See ya! He waved his arm widely and I waved back to him as I boarded the fiacre. Does it taste good, Daifuku? 
Yes, very. Back at the manor, I made myself a cup of my favorite tea and shared the sujiura I bought with Daifuku. These are called sujiura. They're sweet rice crackers, and so they go well with tea. I read about them in a book before, and I've always wanted to try one. The book said that people sold them in a town called Edo. At Edo, the capital of an island nation where Amakusa, Shiro, Tokisada, and Grandmaster Jigen once called home. They lived on this island shortly before the region became prosperous. I guess they lived like a long time ago. I heard that Lord Jigen actually came from that Edo place. I've also heard that Edo is now known as Tokyo. Isn't that fascinating? Also, like, <laughs> does time flow normally here? If they're, like, from Edo, Japan, and yet letters from, like, modern-day Tokyo are also drifting on the island. There, there must be some, like, weird time travel stuff happening here. I see. You studied a lot, haven't you, Hime? That's the scopes, newspapers, and Sujiura. These are all in the books I've read. I've never thought I'd seen them on this island, though. And I would never have discovered them if I never left the manor. Ah! Look, Daifuku! It says I'll find the person I seek! Well, congratulations! I was worried what would happen if I ended up with a bad fortune. The others bore simple bits of advice, such as to study hard and be conscious of your health. I guess these are messages from Lady Amaterasu that I should do my best. <laughs> or they're just from the cookie vendor to make you feel good. I really feel like I can find my soulmate now. Absolutely! Seeing mother in my dream must be a good omen, too. I wish I could say I'll find my soulmate tomorrow, but... I have to go and meet that person in Yomi first. I'll write the letter as soon as possible, so would you be able to meet he me here around late where it's if, would you be able to meet me here around 10 o'clock I really hope he isn't a bad person oh next chapter okay letter delivery all right gonna meet him and deliver the letter it looks like all right there's a lot of <laughs> got my voice oh there's a lot of new characters uh, that they just kind of threw at us. I mean, we met a love interest, and now it looks like they're... I'm guessing these are additional characters? Uh, unless they're secret love routes. But I don't think they're secret love routes, the, the guide would say. <laughs> the guide would say if there was a secret love route. Alright, anywho. I'm gonna end things off here. Gotta make sure, like, the recording's okay. I'm, like, <laughs> wondering why, like, I was getting a blue screen. It's just like my microphone software updating is like, uh oh. Alright, anywho, I need a little break. All these voices, like, sure do destroy me. They're fun, but <laughs> they sure do destroy me. Oh boy. Alright, I hope you guys are having a fun and relaxing time, and I'll see you in the next episode. Uh, bye bye.